So, and we are live. Uh, I don't go to Portland very often, so I went to Portland to get the iPhone. Yeah, got two minor car accidents down there today with my big truck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Hunt for Success podcast number sixteen. Matt Cole, Ryan McCracken, Cody Steinman here. Um, how you doing? I'm doing good. Second time to the museum. Yes. What do you think? I, you know, the first time I was here, I was kind of a little bit of a, a kid in the candy store. I'd taken a lot of photos because it's just, I mean, it's it's intense, but it's really cool because, you know, you like you wonder, like, well, how big is a buffalo? How big is a bear? <laughs> like, now I see right there. Yeah. And I like it. Pretty you big. Know, yeah. I was checking out your Instagram account. Uh-huh. You've got like 3,500 followers. Yeah. But you didn't put any pictures of the museum on there. I didn't. You're right. Uh, is that... Are you ever nervous about polarizing your audience with stuff like that? I don't know if I'm nervous about polarizing our audience. Like we, uh, we set out to do our our social media marketing. Actually, Revere in general, um, uh, we set out to do it. Just be really authentic in how we do it. And so, like a lot of it, it just ends up being kind of like spur of the moment. Like this is who we are. So, um, if, if if it's gonna be polarizing. So then, then so be it. But uh, you know, I'm not looking to uh, you know be edgy or offend people. I'm just looking to put out great content and hopefully get some engagement out of it. So, yeah. well, and that's kind of why we're doing this podcast is because we don't want to at work we don't want to polarize our client base, yeah. right? So um, Ryan and I love to hunt and fish and, uh-huh. and do that kind of stuff, but it's not something we advertise. We don't put taxidermy up in our office yeah. because we we don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable that we're doing business with so we're like hey when we do this podcast let's be real and, and represent yeah. who we are and have fun with it so the hunt for success and yeah. we film it here but the first five or six episodes we did we did am i sounding okay we did uh uh in the other room uh-huh so the background of the guest was that whole room and right there's 100 pieces of taxidermy in there yeah and uh we didn't think much of it but then we had um uh, Dave Savage on our podcast, who's a uh, CEO of uh, software uh-huh. we use in the mortgage industry. And we're really excited for him to push that out to his following because he's a huge YouTube and huge social media following. And uh, he did it. And the feedback he got gave us, which was great. It was uh, um, my marketing team didn't want to put that out yeah. to pull because we were worried about polarizing our viewers, which yeah. makes total sense. And then I asked him, I go, well, should we sell out and move it into a room that doesn't have anything? He goes, no, I want to sell out. Uh, so what we did is we moved into this room mm-hmm. where behind you is just a wall. Yeah, what do I got? Okay. You got like some corners of some friends. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We're going to get a nice curtain or something to put in the back. But that way, the guest isn't necessarily representing something that they're... But you behind know, us, we still have fish and yeah, yeah. big orange sheep. No, that's cool. It, it's... it's it's and fun Ryan's for me to look at. You know, well, you know, I, I work in the, a design-based business, right? And so, like, I, I, what I'm finding out, and this is what I've been talking a lot about lately, is because I've been doing it for a long time where you come up with something, you put your heart and soul into something, and you present it to a client, and the client gets to say, yes, I like it, or no, I don't like it, you know? You hire a plumber. A plumber doesn't, you don't get to say, I like your plumbing work or not, you know? Yeah. Like, so it's like, it's kind of a unique field in that regard. And, uh, and so there's a lot of different people, a lot of different, like, you know, taste for things and stuff like that so i just kind of come to accept and i think it's, it's better that way that you know everyone's different and some people may it might be their preference uh other people not i don't mind it so, so. Do, you, do you find yourself having to sell your designs or sell what you, your product that you came up with because like in mad men yeah he would present a, a, a magazine a yeah ad, right yeah and then it was just like you said they'd either like it or not if they yeah. didn't like it then he was in his job was to sell them on it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I always joke because I'm a big fan of Mad Men. And uh, j- just because of the show, the era, and everything like that. But, you know, you, you watch that and I always think, oh, I wish I could be Don Draper where I could just say how it is and people just love it because you're Don <laughs> Draper or whatever. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't always work that way because clients just always have an opinion on no matter what. And I don't know if it ever worked that way back then either. You know, they sell them on it or something. But uh, I... I've been doing it for 20 years and, and clients, you know, and I feel like on the one hand, I'll sit there and I'll, and I'll put kind of our work into it. I'll, I'll think, okay, the client hired me because they really believe in what we do and everything. And, and we're going to, uh, we're going to do what we know best. And then I think, well, you, you think you hired me because I'm the expert in this. You know, why don't you believe me that I think this is the best way, you know, and sometimes they're right. Sometimes they're wrong, you know, and it's just kind of the nature of the business. But, um, but I, that's what it is. It's 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 a it's a commercialization of art, 
and I just kind of accept it as, as that's the territory and that's okay. But you know, I I do sell people on it if if I there's times like I had an old rule like where you come up with maybe you know four different compositions right and you have three good ones you have one you're like I need a fourth one because I told them I'd produce that fourth one and I learned the hard way like if you just put just any one in there like whatever the, even if you hate it like I just need to have four they will. 99% of the time, pick that one for, that fourth the one that one you, you don't like. like. Yeah. So I'd like, don't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> take the time, burn the midnight oil, do whatever you got to do to produce a high quality work all the time. And um, hopefully you don't end up, if I'm presenting work that, that I don't like, then I don't think I should be presented anyways. That's kind of my philosophy. So we work really hard to really produce work that we think that we believe in and the client will believe in so that whatever they pick, we can be happy with. So, yeah. Stressful. A little bit at times, yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably that the um, anxiety or anticipation when you're getting to roll it out. Yeah, do you, do you feel that? You um, get I used or? to. I, you know, like I've I've always been. Um, my former career, I did kind of like this media relations kind of thing. You know, so you're always kind of you know working with high high intensity situations, and I. Um, you kind of get used to that. I've, I, the days of kind of getting up and presenting an idea, whether it, you know you believe it or not or whatever, but you know presenting an idea and getting the, the goosebumps about it. I, I don't really the, where I where I where I kind of get the nerves still is in uh, talking like making the ask before we get to that point. Like I'm confident in my work. I can present my work all day long, but um, getting them to say, "Hey, I want to hire you for your work." That's always still a little bit nerve wracking, right? Yeah. Hey, this is how much is going to cost over a period of time or whatever and you know so i guess people really don't uh, don't think about it but doing advertising and marketing there is a level of sales in there yeah is that something that you've is that a skill you've honed or is that something you've worked on or um the the the, the sales ability yeah oh gosh um I guess I kind of grew up around people who had, I guess, sales backgrounds are very charismatic people and my, my big influencers, you know, the people in my kind of like, like the older guys that you kind of grew up with or kind of knew. Um, and they were always very outgoing like that. So I was kind of, always felt like I'm going to be like them. So I'm going to push myself to go that way. You know, like one sure. of my first jobs out of college what was kind of the in between going from, you know, jobless college kid to trying to find a career. I sold cars for a little bit. And that's sales. I mean, that's as salesy as it gets, right? Yeah. And and I like my first week on the job, I sold a used car and I made like a three thousand dollar commission off of it or whatever, you know, or, or something Poor like guy. that. And 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 I, and there was like, oh, it's beginner's luck. But I thought, you know, I'm just gonna have fun doing this. I don't I don't ever believe I'm gonna be here for a long time. And and so, uh, you know, I I just kind of I just kind of found it. Uh, it doesn't mean I love it. It just it's just a part of what I do. And you just kind of like find ways to be persuasive because well you're really yeah. you're a real personable guy yeah and well, people well, thanks i mean <laughs> people, people like dealing with real people right mm -hmm. and so that i think that comes across yeah but um so 20 years 20 years and uh how did did this line of work find you or did you find this line of work so um I, yeah so I, I mean for the audience you know my my background's really primarily as a graphic designer um that's where i started out I, I i don't really consider myself as much of a graphic designer anymore although i do still do a considerable amount of design um i was i was a kid really i was i was an artistic kid spacing off in class you know in school and you know just making doodles and stuff like that and then i found out that i was in an art class that i could use this little tiny old mac i don't even know what it was just like the, the little small ones With you the know green and screen it, yeah no it still had the, but it had a black and white screen oh and uh, and I you know I I was taking like type like these fonts and I'd turn them and I'd bend them and I took like an O and made like a little design out of it and then I found out I could print it out and make it a silk screen and I would make these silk screen T-shirts and then give them to my friends in high school and and then that's kind of where it started with design for me so um, and then and then on and then I started making like kind of fake advertisements for my friends if they you know play guitar or whatever in a band or whatever I just made a CD covers I'd make just all kinds of different things just because I wanted to do it but really started with. Uh, really doodling turned into a career. <laughs> so, so that's the 20 years, uh, more or less. And, um, and now it's, it's kind of more evolved. It's kind of this strategic sort of uh, kind of thing. I, 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 have, I have people I work with, they handle most of the design and I help get to think through the, the big idea in theory. So, so did, it, did you go into business right away for yourself? Or? No, no. Um, I my first business I, I was I was a marketing manager at a at a tech startup um, and this was about I guess close to ten years ago now and um, and uh, you know the the stock like the economy tanked yeah. back in 08. yeah 
I think everyone remembers that still. And, and so as a marketing guy, I was one of the first ones to get laid off. They lost a lot of big contracts because of it and everything. So I felt like, well, shoot, nobody's going to be hiring any marketing people right now. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do there. So I, I thought, you know what, I'm going to start, I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start my own business. And, um, and it, it was really kind of freelancing, but I, I put a name to it and I put some kind of services behind it and really pitched it as a business and kind of co-opted people into working with me on it. Not really employees, but you know, and so that was my first business and I parlayed that into like another partnership. So, you know, we talked about this with, um, Ben Busby and how that crash, I mean, Ryan and I are in the, are in the mortgage industry. Yeah, well, so yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you guys know. <laughs> we know it intimately. Yeah. <clears throat> but because of that crash and because of the economic re- recession and everything, the Great Recession, I think that maybe a lot of people were forced to get creative and come up with new business ideas, mm-hmm. everything from starting their own business like you did yep. to companies, big, huge companies like Tesla and Uber and all these companies. Oh, yeah. That start, these little startups that blow up. Yeah, and I wonder if we would have if we'd be so far along with all these new businesses and technology and industry if we wouldn't if we didn't have that crash. Yeah, right. Because taking a leap of faith to leave a job like management, marketing manager for a startup to starting your own business takes a lot of courage. Yeah, right. And fortitude. Yeah, I, you know I I. Uh... If you would have asked me 10 years ago, do you want to start a business? Do you ever want to own a business? I'd be like, I don't know. I don't want to do that. You know, I, I, I knew people who did. And I thought, I don't want to do that. I, that's not what I ever, I, I like the safety and security of having full-time employment. But mm-hmm. I found out quickly that there's not really a lot of safety and security in that either if you're kind of <laughs> depending on your employer and whatever their whims are. So um, I, I, look, I go back, then I knew nothing about starting the business. You know, I think if I can put, you know, 2017 Matt Cole Back in 2008, Matt Cole, you know, was mined and trade mines. And, you know, I probably could have done a lot better, but you're right. I, like, it was a necessity. And actually, you know, the way that I approached it was was kind of the way I'm still approaching it now, which is, um, which is I didn't, I knew that I had to make a living. I knew that starting a business was an opportunity to, to do that. Uh, but I didn't have a lot of startup capital to do it. I didn't, you know, so it was just kind of bootstrapping it and figuring out how I'm going to work it out. And so I would... Uh, I remember one of, the, one of the jobs I had a, a client who'd give me stuff like these web pages. They would, they would, you know, and they wanted them sliced up into just basic HTML, right? I'm not, a, I'm, I'm a designer. I'm not a web developer. And at this know. point, you yeah. got your business license. You yeah. got a company name, and is it just you? Yeah, it's just me. It? Yeah. And and I, but I'm but I'm working in contractors into it. So like you know, and I didn't, I wouldn't even, wouldn't have even known to call them contractors back then. I just would have said, hey, I'm gonna hire you know somebody to help me out with it, you know, and. This guy would give me these web pages, you know, these designs or whatever, and he expected I was going to code them myself, and I'd give it to another guy. He'd, he'd pay me 500 bucks, I'd pay that guy 250 bucks, and I just started kind of, kind of doing that, um, hustling through it and just trying, you know, but, but really kind of building out teams of people that weren't necessarily employees per se, but they were like part of my contract. Yeah, subcontractors, and I, and I still do that to this day because in, in, in the creative business, you you have that flexibility to kind of work with people. And in fact, I think it's a real strength. I've found the strength in doing it because you get to pick the right person for that project instead of having an employee that you have to depend on whether or not they'd be the right fit for that. Trying know. to feed them work yeah. to keep them yeah. busy. And, yeah. 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 So so there, I guess there's a little bit of an innovation there. Yeah. And uh, so where do you go to school at? Where did I go to school? Yeah, the college. Uh, I went to Whitworth University in Spokane. Okay. Yeah. Spoke Compton. Yeah. Spoke Compton. And uh, did you take any business classes? I didn't. No. So like understanding the 1099 and how to do all that. <laughs> Nothing. None of that. So like I, I this this is uh, I I was I did two years of community college. Didn't get an AA, but I studied graf- graphic design. And I said I don't want. I and I never wanted to be a graphic designer. I never wanted to do it. Um, but it followed me everywhere I went. And, Why uh, didn't you want to do it? You I, were... you know, I, I had, I had bigger ambitions. You know, I, I, I got really into history and, uh, and, and government. So I went. My, my degree is actually in political science, and uh, I, got, I got a bachelor's in political science, and then a, I minored in speech communication. And if I could go back, I probably would have flipped that because I do more communications work than I ever do. You know political science work, you know, now, and actually I'd, I probably would have just been a business major altogether because I feel like everything I've learned about graphic design, I didn't really learn from school. I learned from just experience. And um, I, it's one of those fields I just feel like, I don't know if we really need 
this, this might be controversial in the community, but I, I don't know if you really need an education to do design. I, I think that you do need an education to some degree to well, do. Well, I have a business degree yeah. in marketing. Yeah. And I would say that 98% of my experience has come from the actual experience versus my college degree. Very true. My college degree just got me my first job. Yeah, exactly. From there, it yep. was school of hard knocks. Yep. So... Yeah, I have a sixty thousand dollar resume. That's what I have. <laughs> yeah, and we'll, and we'll see what happens to yeah. universities over the next twenty years. Uh huh. You know, maybe they'll go away. Maybe they'll all be online. I mean, with all the uh, political turmoil and stuff yeah. on these campuses, and uh, people starting to see, like, if you had the two thousand seven Matt Cole mm -hmm. meet you now. You don't necessarily need that no. degree to do what you've done. Have no. you? Cody's not on. Well, Cody's on Facebook, but he's not like totally on Facebook. <laughs> like I would probably need to log in for him. But uh, have you seen the Mike Rowe video that has come out recently about talking about how oh, much yeah. debt no. these kids are coming out of college with, with no jobs to go uh, to? I, not recently, but you know, you, you bring up Mike Rowe and, and kind of what that guy's about. Uh, like that's actually kind of, that, that I, I actually kind of adopted that the sort of philosophy is like, you know, like or do you really need a college degree? Does everybody in the in America really need a bachelor's of something uh, to get a good job and earn a good living? And and uh, so this last year, this last summer, I had a, an intern, and um, it was really a soft internship. But she came in; she was very young. She was getting ready to go to U of O, and she was fantastic. I mean, but you know, and, and it brings up a lot of questions. Like, do you want to start a formal internship program? And I thought, I don't, I don't want to do a formal internship program. With Revere at all, I think what I'm going to do maybe either next year or in the future is is like an apprenticeship program, which is different, which is you're given a real work experience to learn a trade. Because really, the design uh, and kind of the communication arts sort of field is really a trade. You know that, that you really get good at. The best people I've I've worked with are people who have done it for a long time and have kind of acquired this. You know, go through like the whole process of apprenticeship to journeyman or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I, and I really think that, that that's where we should be putting our efforts and not, in not saying, hey, go get a, a really expensive four-year degree to come in here to get an entry-level job and be mediocre at it. Why not spend those four years getting an experience and learning the, what, you know, what it takes to be a really great graphic designer or web developer or whatever, so. Well, and learn to learn, yeah. because in, especially in graphic design, it seems like you're always having to learn because technology is changing so quickly. Right, right? yeah. It's like I went to go get, I'm a fairly tech savvy guy, yeah. fairly, and I went to go get my iPhone today, and the gal's like, do you just want to set this up on your own, or do you want me to set it for you? I'm like, can you please set it up for me? <laughs> so I can watch somebody yeah. else do it, because it, everything's changing so quick, Yeah, and uh, especially in the last two or three years with yeah. social media and understanding how it works and AdWords and all Oh, yeah, that. totally. You, you know, I, I work in a pretty technical field now, too, because we do, like, a lot of web development, and there's a lot of... A lot of technical pieces that go into that, right? And I'm not again. I'm not. I'm not like a, a web developer. I don't write code. I I have people that I work with that do that um, alongside me. And and so you look at that, like computer, the, the traditional computer science program uh, program at, at your university. And a lot of them they don't teach you necessarily to write. You know, three different stacks of code. You know, that do Python or PHP or whatever. You know, like they're. Um, you know, you're learning kind of the principles of you know computer science as as a whole. But these people get out of college and, and yes, they kind of know how to code, but they're not really great, you know? And there's actually like these, yeah, I, I don't know if you've heard of them, there's these, they're, they're called coding boot camps. Um, and there's, you know, there's all around the country and you go for 13 weeks and it's a really intensive, it's a really intensive course. You pay these people like, you know, 10, 12, $15,000 or whatever, you know, and they're private, they're not even like universities or anything like that, they're just companies that says th their product is to teach you how to code one or more stacks or however many stacks or whatever pathway you're on. And when you graduate, the average salary, I think, is like $75,000 a year after 13 weeks of doing wow. this, you know? So you think I, if you can put in a, a, a short-term investment, you know, a pretty nominal compared to what America's education uh, university system costs nowadays, you know? Yeah. And you did over 13 weeks, and then you have a solid 90% placement in any job. You know, I'm, I'm not... I feel like I'd hire one of those guys in a day week rather than the kid that graduates with a you know a computer science. I had degree. no idea. Those yeah. boot camps. Yeah. And so the employers are probably going to these boot camps more than the universities. Yeah. Um. I. I it's it's emerging. They're they're pretty new. Um. But to me, in my experience, you know, like what, like like as a business owner, you know, you'll have the local university reach out to you and say, "Hey, hire our students," and that's great because there's a lot of like I've I've hired those students before, and you get a lot of great um great employees that way. But um. 
but really the, like, like people who understand how to write you know, a mobile app from the ground up after 13 weeks, uh, that's, that's You pretty... just use Squarespace. Right. <laughs> so, so you did. could, yeah. or Wix. I don't know. Don't get me started because I was just talking to somebody about this this morning. There's so many different platforms, and I'm, I'm a WordPress guy. We do everything in WordPress, and but we bend WordPress to where you know um, it's completely different than the WordPress you'd probably take out of the box. You know, it's 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 different. But Squarespace, Wix, all these other ones are they're emerging. They, they make it super easy nowadays. They make it super easy. Uh, and I I went to Square. We went to Squarespace. Purely because of the advertising. Yeah. I'm like, all right, we need to do a website. Oh, for sure. The first thing I thought was a Squarespace yeah. commercial. And then after I signed up for Squarespace, I'm like, shit, I should have checked out Wix. Because uh-huh. I see their ads too. But it's good. But then you start looking at their websites. You're like, oh, this guy's just using Squarespace. Yeah. Because it is, they do start to all look the same. Yeah. But it's, you know, for what we're doing here, it, it worked. This is a right. non-paying hobby. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we should start a mortgage boot camp. There you go. Ugh. Or does it already exist? Or Thank podcasting you. boot camp. Yeah. There you go. We would need to hire some instructors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, Mike Rowe is great. Yeah. Because we definitely, there, there is uh, industries that you have to have a degree. We can't have doctors going to a 13-week boot camp. Right. But um, how many people go to college and then get stuck in a, a career in a cubicle wanting to take the, hang themselves with their, well, mice don't have cords anymore. You know, I read a book years ago when I, when I was in, after I graduated from college and <laughs> of course I read it after college, but one of the statements in the book was there's only three degrees that really matter. <laughs> and, the, and that's your, you know, and I think it's talking about kind of postgraduate degrees, but, um, uh, your JD, you know, your, uh, MBA or your MD, like <laughs> that's like, don't get a, PhD in something because you, you're probably going to be unemployed. You know, like, don't get a PhD in art history unless you're going to be, a, you know, a museum curator, which is fewer, fewer and far between. But like, you know, there's those. I think the overall point I took from that is, is that there's a lot of there's a lot of different types of degrees nowadays, and I, I'm not knocking that because to each their own. And I think that you should study and do what you're passionate about. But at, at, the, at the same time, I was trying to build jobs and grow an economy. And uh, you look at the cost of living in America just is skyrocketing. I mean, you guys know because you're in the mortgage business mm-hmm. what it what it what it takes. Uh, you know, we have to ask ourselves the questions: is 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 a college degree really getting somebody to the career they need to be at? You know, or can can they do that through a skilled trade? Uh, well, and what an unbelievable time to be an ultra, entrepreneur! Oh, for sure. I mean, there's so many ways to make money, uh, like that website Fiverr. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want, if you're a coder or yeah. graphic designer, or editor, uh, we've had them look at some stuff for us, and it's cheap. You know, if we want to separate the audio from a, a video, and we struggled with one of them, pay a guy 15 bucks, and it's done in a few minutes. Oh, for sure. And uh, you couldn't do that five years ago. No, and that, that's where entrepreneurship has, and you talk about that innovation. I mean, stuff that's around now, uh, technology has allowed us to do that. You know, I, I use a site, it's called Upwork. I don't know if you've heard of that. Upwork? Yeah, Upwork. Uh-uh. And it, they have an app, There's, it's a site, but it's where you can find people to do that same thing, but you get them to bid on it, you know. And you get a lot of people, you can restrict your, um, you can restrict who you're looking for if you're looking for just kind of like uh, US-based workers or something like that, but you get a lot of people like in, you know, um, Eastern Europe or, you know, East Asia or whatever, you know, like, who do it for dirt cheap um which is cool because they're skilled but you know like like i think those those kind of things like didn't exist because they're before because there wasn't really a need for that and i i've hired off of those a couple of times and and i i believe sincerely that if you're going to work hard if you're going to have a real skill then you should be paid what what you're worth on it you know yeah you know but i'd 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 won it was just a tiny tiny little job you know editing a couple photos and i said hey my bid for this is probably about 100 bucks it's going to take a couple hours worth of work and I just didn't have time to do it myself. And, and a couple people bid like 20 bucks on it. Like they're trying to outbid themselves. And, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so you can set a reserve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> right. You know, I, I thought there's no yeah. way, like, like even, if you, even if I did pick you, I'd insist on paying you $100 for it or whatever, whatever it is. It's going to take you a couple hours worth of work, you know, and feed your family or whatever you got to do. But, I, like, to me, that's what that job's work. And I'm like, you know, like, I guess I'm an entrepreneur and yes, I'm going to find the best prices for things. But I also think that I don't want to undercut people and, you know. Well, it's probably early. Yeah. Right. I'm sure. And in, in, as that, as that gets more and more popular, yeah. those fees will go up. For sure. But it's probably just because it's everyone's, there's not enough users yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
um, uh, I, was, I had a thought, <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's crazy. Oh, have you? Do you have kids? I do. I have three. You have three. Yeah. Uh, what age? Seven, eight, and one. Almost two. Uh, do you have any girls? I have a girl right then, but she's a seven-year-old. Uh, then you, have you heard of LOLs? No. What is that? Uh, I'm sure she has. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you too. We just recently cut back 90% of our YouTube use with uh-huh. our daughter, but we have a five-year-old. LOLs, it's, you know those surprise toys where, like, the Zoom Zooms and stuff where mm-hmm. oh, yeah. you buy one for, like, five oh, bucks? Oh, I know. But, they, you know? She, actually, uh, she asked for this for Christmas. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. LOLs. Yeah. I have some I can sell you. Hatchimals are like Hatchimals, Hatchimals right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a stupid plastic ball, and uh, I, she really wanted one, so we went to Fred Meyer's, and I got her one. Thirteen dollars yeah. for this little toy. Yeah, and we get home and it's shrink wrapped. So she's like, "We help me open this." So I open it. Oh, take the first layer of shrink wrap off, and there's another layer of shrink wrap. Yep. And it's the, the gimmick is there's like seven layers, and every time you open one, a little toy pops out. And then you get to the end, and there's like this five cent little <laughs> r- rubber baby or whatever. Right. Right. I'm annoyed just listening to this. <laughs> yeah. No, it was. It was it was $13 and about an hour and a half worth of unwrapping. Yeah. <laughs> and I was trying to fix our dryer. And I, so I'm like, oh, perfect. I'll buy you these LOLs. And you then keep I yourself busy. You keep yeah. yourself busy. I'm going to go fix our squeaky dryer. Yeah. I had to stop every 30 seconds. Daddy, will you help me open this yep. one? Daddy. This is an activity for you. But I thought about it and I gave it to her and she's sitting at her table and I'm like, I should take out my camera uh-huh. and record her opening this. And put it on YouTube. Right. Right? Because there's so many ways to make money. And if you just type in, if you don't mind, Ryan, type in, uh, go to YouTube and type in LOL unboxing. And let's yeah, see right. how many that, views. I, I guarantee that's a thing. <laughs> oh, it's a big thing. Just unboxing videos in general are kind yeah. of a, a thing. It's a yeah. weird thing. but. Oh, yeah. Look at all these videos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, click on see how many views these things have had. All right. Um... So... The parents that are exploiting their kids are making really good money. <laughs> but it was the first time I had that thought. Like, yeah. All right. So this one is one, I of, should one of the newest record. ones here. I can do it from my phone and upload it. Right. And just type out and name it LOL Unboxing to see how many views I get. Dude, this one's got 51,000. See, we were getting listened to. That was a Wix ad. The government was listening to they us. They are listening. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, this one has 51,000 views. Oh, that's the big one. They want $300 for those on uh, Amazon. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's what I saw. They were like, uh, they were like 70, 70 bucks for one of the ones that she asked for or something. Yeah. I thought, just to unwrap something? Yeah. And then suddenly I become my father, right? Look like at I'm, that one. This one has 1. 1.7 million views. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so, but... But back to your point, it's like, I should just record her. Mm-hmm. And, and then I'm like, is that wrong for me to think that I should just record? Because there's so many ways to make, oppor- uh, so many opportunities to make, oh. to make money online that didn't exist just a few years ago. Yeah, I, I guess you can, you can argue, you know, like, well, somebody else is making money off of it. Why, why shouldn't I? I mean. <laughs> well, it takes five minutes to videotape a kid opening that. We do this for two or three hours. Yeah, and invest all this time, and we're lucky if we get if we break a hundred views. I like to think the cut the I, <laughs> the content is is a little bit more rich yeah. here <laughs> than the unboxing something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you started your business. Yeah, kind of working for you for yourself using yeah. subcontractors. Mm-hmm. And where are you at today? Are you are you doing business locally or all I, over the country? I, uh, you know, I, I, have, I have a client right now in Jerusalem. Uh, I have clients in Silicon Valley. I have clients uh, a lot here in the Portland and Vancouver area. So, like, yeah, a little bit of all, all over the place. And are you getting these from your website? No, probably not from my website. In fact, um, my website's kind of a work in progress. In fact, we've been so busy uh, uh, you know, over the, like the last year. That this year's been insanely busy. That you know, the the guy that, that does some strategy for me and he kind of runs helps runs our social media and stuff. You know, he's like, oh. Uh, when are we gonna get the website done? Because I we just have been so busy, and you know we have a bunch of these case studies we've been doing, you know, uh, for clients, kind of showcasing our work and what we can do and what our capabilities are. Uh, but they're not coming from the website; they're really coming from word of mouth. And I'll say this: like I started out, like when I started out, probably 
you know, what was that, that 10 years ago, um, you know, it was, it was really, it was really kind of hand to mouth trying to figure out how I'm going to get clients where, you know, that's the one thing I didn't think about it. You know, I thought I can do this, no problem. Yeah. But then you got to think about where, where's the work going to come from? How am I going to get that new work? And, uh, I, and I wasn't good at that. And that was kind of the, the trial by fire. And that's something that I think that uh, like what I talk to a lot of people in my business, you know, freelancing, but I tell somebody, if you're going to be a designer or you're going to be a web developer or something like that, at some point you will be a freelancer. And it's just, it's not a, it's just a given. You will at some point because someone's going to ask you to do something on the side, you know, for their kid's birthday party or their wedding, or they're going to ask you to build like, you know, a brand kit for them or whatever. But you'll freelance at some point and then you have to be prepared to learn how to do that. And, you know, it's, it's a, that's the business side of things. And that's the one thing I, I, that I've probably been more passionate about is more than just doing the craft of like, I love making great stuff. And I think that the people that I work with, and when I say we, because you know, it is a team effort, like I can't do anything that Revere has done without a team. Um, and we produce some really killer stuff. But, um, it, you know, uh, I forgot what I was going to say to that. But, uh, <laughs> well, you should, you, should get, yeah. uh, you should get an intern yeah. to do your website. Yeah. And then you can. You just go to Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? You know, this, is the, this is the funny story about Squarespace. This is what I was telling somebody. Uh, this morning it was, uh, you know, and, and I'm a web guy. Like I think I'm pretty, pretty savvy with, you know, uh, with, with web architecture and everything like that. And I work in WordPress and everything. But you know, I I've tried twice now to start a Squarespace site. One was going to be like my own personal site, and another one, you know, and I could not figure it out. I, it's not as easy <laughs> yeah, as they make it look. Yeah. I mean, uh, um, Emery Wagner, Wagner. I always say wait, Emery Wagner uh, has been on twice, and his website looks awesome yeah. his blog's awesome his logos are awesome and he does it all on Squarespace so I'm like oh I think that's where I got Squarespace from yeah. and so I went to Squarespace and mine looks not 10% as good as his yeah um, so I don't know I, I, I'm, I'm not hating on it. I think it's probably a great platform I know people who swear by it and that's that's what they put their that's their bread and butter is like building Squarespace sites you know you know Wix is, Wix is another one right like I was like I'm not going to use Wix and actually Wix used to have a, a kind of a sort of a chintzy cheap kind of yeah. reputation about it but they've gotten they've improved you know my wife one day she's like I'm gonna try and build a website using Wix I'm just gonna see what this is about I was like yeah yeah whatever you know like I'm I'm a professional and <laughs> two hours later she's like look at the site I built I'm like holy shit that looks pretty good <laughs> <laughs> so uh, do you guys use MailChimp uh, I've used MailChimp. I don't presently use it. I have clients I, that use it. Yeah. I just discovered it. It's pretty good. It's yeah. There's a lot you can do with that. There's so many of those programs too. Yeah, like but, how yeah. to embed a video and an mm -hmm. email and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think MailChimp is really. They were one of the first to really kind of like you know the democratization of email marketing, right? Where you don't have to have a pro do it for you. You yeah. can do it yourself. And um, and they uh, they they've been kind of the, at the forefront of a lot of things and they have a lot of cool tools so and it's yeah. free yeah it's free which is incredible yeah yeah um so one of the hot topics so ryan and i do go to a lot of industry events yeah where they talk about business development and and what's going on what's trending and we see a lot of people in our industry and you kind of made me think about it that get so wrapped up in technology mm -hmm. and internet uh, CRMs, online leads, videos, video marketing, all this. Yeah. But what they lose sight of is that relationship business. Oh, yeah. Right? Of, yeah. of going out and meeting people, just like you talked about. Yeah. It's like, I have a business, now how do I go meet people? I mean, you're a advertising graphic design company, and you just said your biggest source of business is word of mouth. Yeah. Which is crazy, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I, we... Uh, Oh, I've always been a very relational person, and and again, in in this venture, I I, I set out to say, you know, like who, like when I was defining, like what is this company going to be, what is Revere going to be, and uh, and then who am I in that process, and like you know, I, I I was trying to separate it from being Revere is not Matt, and Matt is not Revere, although you know, like when you're kind of a at the founder stage, there's there's a little bit of that, mm -hmm. but what we wanted, and actually the name, you know, the name really kind of comes into play there, is we wanted uh, we wanted to be genuine with people. And the clients that we, we, we did work for, we felt like if you have a story to tell, if you have something that you need to share to the world, you know, through your brand and your marketing platform, um, we want the people, your audience, to look at that and say, like, wow, you know, like, you, like we want to be a part of that. It's, like, magnetic. And you, you know those brands, like, where you're, like, you know, that that you're really drawn to, you want to be a part of, you want to kind of, you know, associate with it. Like, Harley Davidson, right? Harley Davidson is this brand where it just has a, a cult following, you know, whether or not... In a, it, 
their product is good or whatever, you know, something like that. But so we said we wanted our clients to be revered for who they are, and that's where the name came from. It's just to be revered, and um, and it's about a relationship, right? So uh, your brand is more than just your logo. It's more than just your website. It's more than just all of your marketing collateral. It's it's really about who you are and how you live out, you know, like through your organization and. Mm-hmm. And how you relate to your stakeholders. So you treat people well. You are genuine. You have a, something engaging to offer, and people are going to follow you and, and want to be associated with you and want to tell other people. Yes, yes. Yeah, which and is how you and I met. Yeah, it, it totally. Way, it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and and we practice that too. We try and practice that. And, and as a result, I think that's what becomes our primary marketing effort is just talking to people. Uh, I I've kind of made like this one formal. I, I'm going to really ramp it up next year. But I've I've gone out and tried to meet with as many people as I could. You know, accept many as many invitations as I could to meet with people just to kind of get to know people in my community and the mm-hmm. business community because I want to know who they are and what they do and not necessarily be to my benefit just to kind of get out and see what people are about and and uh, hear their story and maybe share mine in the process. I think the people that are relying 90% on technology are going to fail. And, yeah. and what you said is is key because if you can use both, right? If you yeah. can go out and meet people and and do the word of mouth and build yeah. relationships, one, it's a lot more fun. Right. And you get to meet cool people, which is why we do this. Uh-huh. But two, because technology and Instagram and all this stuff, you can take that and start doing business outside your community really quick. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, we, we ask a lot of questions. Like, that, that's exactly it. Like, you can, um, you can put, and you'll see this, you know, and there's, there's people who are kind of growth hacking stuff, you know, like on Instagram, for example, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen those, like the, the double tap to see the magic, they'll circle something on a photo, you know, they want, you know, you're like, what yeah. is it? You know, all they really want is a like. If all you're getting is a like, that's what you're going to get is a like, and you might have 2,000 likes on a photo, but that's going to mean jack, because you're not engaging with people, and you're ultimately going to, like, it's going to go nowhere, right? Mm-hmm. So we strive to be engaging, so we've done that in our, and even our social media, where we ask a lot of questions. We actually started doing this thing, and, and you know, it was kind of questionable at first, is like, what's the benefit to Revere? Well, it wasn't really, other than we're just kind of like, we're, we get pumped on other people's work, but we started this thing called Freelance Friday, and it was our hashtag. And so we said, hey, every Friday, we're going to feature somebody else's artwork and, and, and just to promote them because there's so many people doing, like, you know, really hustling, trying to make a, a living, and, and they do really good work. And they don't work for us. It's not our client. It's not, it's not our product that we're doing. And, but we featured them because we wanted, to, um, we wanted to just showcase what people are doing, and, you know, and, and that's the relational aspect. And we've built a lot of good relationships with people who follow us, who are engaged with our account now yeah. because of it. And, and actually, we've even, uh, we, we've even hired a couple of people out of it because it just, it just happens that Can way. Can you so. pull that up, Ryan? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Now that, and, uh, it's on the Instagram. So That's yeah. the wrong way to do business, isn't it? To invite your competitors or, or other graphic design companies to, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, we do the same thing. It's like this. You know, we've, we've had other people that do mortgages on the show. Yeah. And it's like, I'm not scared to lose business to them. Uh, we can all learn from each other and get better. What's the... Uh, uh, it's Revere Creative is the... Is the What's user. the hashtag, oh, though? Uh, Freelance Friday. Uh, on your personal Instagram, isn't it kind of like a time machine sometimes when you got, start looking at your pictures? Yeah. And you just can scroll up and your kids get younger? Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Oh, yeah. I, I, was, I did that the other day over the holiday week. You know, you, know, you get reminded of it. Facebook's even worse, you know, like it will show you like, hey, this is a photo from five years ago. And you're like, yeah. oh my gosh. Well, that's where, uh, that's where that initial photo of my little boy, that was seven years ago and it popped so these up. these are just other people. These are right? other people's, uh, you know, um, I'm looking for one that's ours. That guy's flipping us off. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting a no Facebook. I'm going to be the first to not be on Facebook. I'm going to start a trend. I wish I could do that. I, I, I said it for a long time, uh, like, well, I have to be on Facebook because I'm, I'm in marketing, so I have to know what's going on and how Facebook's being used. And, you know, now my business is less. Uh, this mar- was, wasn't this one? Yeah, that's one right there. Yeah. This is somebody we featured, you know. Uh, yeah, they're in Norway. I mean, and that's look at cool. that. I mean, I see stuff that they do, that people do, and I feel like, you know, I feel like I do pretty good work. Uh, the, the, the people I work directly with do pretty good work. And then you find people like this, and you're like, wow. Like, they are really good. They need to be featured. <laughs> yeah. So. From across the world. Yeah. From across um, the world. Do you know, uh, do you know Jerry Insko? No. His, uh, his, his handle is Joker. Um, started up East Coast. Okay. I want to say New York. Uh, graffiti artist. Okay, yeah. Um, he's on my cycling team. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, came up through that, you know, the, I want to say is, you know, in the 80s when the whole graffiti culture yeah. was really big. And he has a massive following. He doesn't do uh, 
Griff, you know, he doesn't go out and tag stuff anymore. Right. Um, but he'll, he'll post something on Instagram and the people like he'll post like a, a memory. Oh, remember when I did this one in 88 yeah. and people will just start, con- there'll be hundreds and hundreds of comments right. like, Oh, yeah. that was such a good piece. And, <laughs> um, and yeah. then him and like two other, uh, artists went over somewhere in Europe and, you know, they were, um, contracted to do this big, you know, graffiti piece in this town, and um, he's in Portland. Oh wow! Um, I'll have to check that out. He'd, he'd probably be a good a good contact yeah, for no you. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. What's uh? Would you know what is? Uh, yeah, let's. Uh, I think. No, hold on. You know, there, there are there are so many people who are so good at what they do, and whether it's you know artistic. I mean, I you know, art just seems to be the one that's most visual, so it grabs people's attention. But you know. I think people like that, they, like, and that's one thing I want to do. I'm going to find the people who, who I think I just do really killer stuff and, and promote them because somebody's got to see that. More people have got to see how cool it, like the one we yeah. just showed you. I mean, I thought that was cool. So here's, uh, uh, so this isn't, this isn't his main thing, but this is some of his work. Is he, so he's, this is what he's, is this what he does now? Yeah, this okay. is, so he does some side stuff, uh, but yeah. like this is some stuff that he did a bunch of years ago that he just posted recently. That's cool, like you know, sort of geometric. Yeah, he does these. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Yeah, he does some, some crazy cool stuff. Um, hmm. Let's see if we can see some of his. Well, you know, it's, it's taking advantage of opportunities and yeah. taking that risk. Yeah, I was picking up some food for a Christmas party, and I was sitting at the bar waiting for him to cook it up, and there was this uh, kid sitting next to me, and he was talking with his friend who was cooking from across the bar, and, and, uh, and his friend goes, oh, what have you been up to? He goes, oh, i just been designing. So yeah. his friend walked away. I said, oh, you design? He's like, yeah, he took out this fanny pack he made, and it had a special clip, and it had his logo on it. Uh-huh. And this kid, I think, just graduated high school or still in high you school. You doing like kind of like his own product design then? Or? Yeah. Yeah. And then he was showing me all this other stuff he's designing, and he's talking about um, uh, how he's trying to get started and everything. Yeah. And um, the kid kind of looked like a gangbanger, yeah. right? And, uh, and I, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, oh, that's so cool that at this age, your, your ambitions design and do this. So I gave him my card and I said, come on our podcast. But he has a call. Yeah. So it's like, you can't miss those. I'm not that this is a huge opportunity. No, but you but, should. I mean, I mean if, if you're trying to make a name for yourself, you know, it's like, yeah. I, I have a good buddy of mine, actually the guy that got me into design years ago, and he's a musician now. And he's a fantastic musician, but he... Uh, you know, like it, he came to Portland, he lives in Texas now, he came to Portland for a show and we're talking to him, you know, and, and I was like, oh, you're looking at other shows up here? He's like, I'll take anything and everything. And this guy is, you know, 40 something years old now. And he's like, he's like, I'll still take anything and everything because I just want to, I want my re- mm-hmm. music to reach the world and, and whatever it takes to do that, playing coffee shops, big venues, small venues, whatever, you know, I, I kind of admire that, that outlook, you know, you got to seize the day on those things. And, you know, if you really want to make something of yourself or whatever, take every opportunity. And sometimes it's a grind. Sometimes you got to get up early sometimes you got to stay up way late to do it you know or you know you're, you're tired but i i think that you know the people who really do that who really hustle you know and have the good thing to show for it are the people that you know you, you want to associate with because those are the ones who are making a difference in in their world so yeah, yeah. it's all about that um, yeah yeah all about that yeah all those all those ideas and people all that mm-hmm. action going on at once and yeah you, you never know what's going to happen and, and i've kind of said this a lot on the podcast but you know people that are super successful Everyone wants to know what what made him successful, but nobody wants to hear the hundred or thousand failures they right. had, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's all about getting out there and taking action, but... Yeah. Um, well, this is really cool. So, uh, 20 years, where do you want to go? I'm, I want to build... I, I want to build a... I'm, I'm building a company, uh, and, and I'm, very, I'm very ambitious about that. I, I want... Um, I don't, I don't want to build the next, you know... The, the next IPO or whatever, you know, necessarily. I, but I want to build it. Number one, I, I set out, when I set out to do this, I said, here's what I want to do. I want to, I'm going to produce great work because I really believe in it. And I think that the world could use some, some good, like some better branding, better artwork, you know, and, and that's my mm-hmm. contribution, you know, through that. And, uh, and I want to help other people. I said, I want to help other people become better in their careers and better at their craft. And then I want to take care of my family. So, um, so how are I going to do that? But I, you know, I, I'm, my goal is, is, uh, is a growth plan that would put Revere, you know, um, 
as, as one of the bigger design studios in the Portland, Vancouver area, that's what I want to do. I want to be, you know, if, if I had my, my way, I would be the, the top dog in, in Vancouver. And, and, and I think we have, um, we had the drive to get there, so it, yeah, but when, I'm, in, I'm in it for the long game, too. When, when did you found Revere? Uh, 2016, so last year. So we're, I'm coming up on two Good. years, so we're, so we're babies. Good. Yeah. And do you have outside mentors or influencers? Yeah, I do. I have, I have a business too? coach. She's fantastic. So she Actually, this is great. Um, I didn't ever really believe in the whole life coach mentality. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever worked with something like that. Yes. But it's a former client of mine, and she said, hey, I'm, I'm leaving my job in marketing to do this. I really want to do this. And she's like, so can I do some market research with you? And I sat down and kind of talked to her. I was like, wow, what you did, that's really interesting. And she's like, yeah, she's like, that's what I do. She's like, I'll give you a complimentary session. And I was like, sure, why not? And I never, I never looked back. And uh, she helped me uh, go through kind of a personal transition and, um, and kind of like doing the, like, like, hey, how does Matt Cole be Matt Cole? And, and once we got through that, you know, that led me to Revere. And, um, and once we kind of got through that, I thought, it's time to transition. I need some help, you know, like your ex- expertise in marketing and business and everything like that. I, I want your help. Um, a, you know, building this company. And so we meet uh, almost every week, usually bi-weekly. Um, How long are your meetings? Uh, about an hour to two hours each time. And I have homework in between. And yeah. Yeah. So it's, but it's been, it's been fantastic because it's like it, to have somebody who's kind of removed from that um, and kind of hold your feet to the fire. Like, hey, did you do these things this week? We're, you know, doing a lot of planning. Like right now we're doing our 2017 planning and, and we're have some ambitious growth, growth plans. And, um, and it's, so she's making sure that I'm, I'm doing that. But I, I, I recommend it for anybody, you know, who needs somebody who to kind of like push them forward. Well, it's, just yeah. doing a business plan. Yes. Like where do you begin? And, you know, yeah. and so having somebody there to coach you with that. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's the area where I, I wish I would have had the business degree because I didn't ever learn how to do a formal business plan mm-hmm. or, you know, kind of write that, write out that, you know, all those strategic objectives and whatnot. But. So do you like that accountability? I do, actually. I do because, you know, like if, if I didn't, you know, like if I... Um, if I didn't do it, it's, it's like, my wife's like, you know, like, like I can see all day long, we're busy, you know, and that's why the website's, you know, not fully done. But, you, um, I think you make time for the things that you're really passionate about, you know, mm-hmm. and the things that you can put that energy towards. And so this is something that maybe I might not, I, I might not be as detailed about it or as intentional about it. And, but my whole plan, my whole kind of life game plan is to be very intentional and in, in how I do things, um, uh, both personally and professionally. And so if it takes, you know, uh, what, somebody is, on my what, side, what yeah. does that mean to you being intentional? Um, I, I don't, I don't want to just like, I, um, my mom used to call it meandering, right? Like the old fashioned term is like, don't just meander out there. I'm like, okay, walking aimlessly. I, I don't want to do that. I, I, I want to, um, I, if I'm going to, if I'm going to start a company, if I'm going to build a company, I'm going to say, Hey, Cody, this is what I want my company to look like, uh, in five, 10, 20 years or whatever, then I better mean it. And I better do the work that's going to take it to get there. And that means I have to say, I'm going to take the time to get up early and work on my business plan this morning before I have my client calls and do my production work for the day. Um, so that, that's really what it's, what's about to me is, is saying, Hey, I'm going to do everything with a purpose and not just for the sake of doing it. I don't check so boxes. When you wake up in the morning, do you have your day like blocked out? Do you time block? Or? Yeah, I take Sunday evenings usually and I'll, I'll plan out my week. So in general, kind of sketch it out like, okay, here's what's going on this week. Um, and then, uh, and then I get up usually early every morning to kind of plan the day. And I, I used to use all these apps, like you talk about technology, right? I used to have these different apps I'd use, like the to-do apps, you know, like using mm-hmm. Basecamp or Asana, you know, like it, run my projects. And we use those for team collaboration and whatnot. But for me personally, I was at uh, Staples one day and there was this pad and it was like the, it just said today and there's a bunch of check boxes, you know. And I plan my day on that little pad every single day and I just, you know. And I just say, here's the things I'm going to tackle today. This is what I know I can get done today to be successful. And I don't leave until it's done. So that just helps me focus. But is it easier to say I'm not going to leave until it's done than to actually do it? Like, do you get to that point where it's 530 and you're like, shit, there's three more things on this list? Uh, yeah, ask my wife. <laughs> <laughs> there's times, there's, there's times, you know, like she, I had that conversation with her yesterday. She says, uh, you know, she called me, and it's like 3.30, 4 in the afternoon. And she says, hey, when are you going to be home tonight? I'm just worried about dinner. You know, I'm like, yeah. okay, cool. Um, and I said, well, I have three things left on my list today, and I'm going to get these three things done before I go. And I did, you know. But then I know, like, what it does is put your butt in gear, right? You're like, okay, well, I have to be home for dinner with the family. I have things to do, so I better kick it in gear and, you know, like, close Instagram or whatever it's going to take, you know, to get it done. And I, I usually will get it done majority of the time. Uh 
do you find yourself like I don't know what your office environment's like, but mm-hmm. with other people in your office, but is it easy to slip into that reactive mode where you're working on your to-do list and then all of a sudden somebody comes in and dumps a dumps their monkey on your back or yeah, you, you know, I, I I think I think so. There's times when when you do that, you know, I um um. I try to pad it a little bit, you know, like like my time, knowing hey, this is this is what I have to do today, and um, and I know that, you know, like for example, for a while I had I had one client for a while who was really high demanding, uh, you know, very much like I need something right now, and and um, we were dedicated to that and we'd get it done, but you know there is that, and I think that's just like I always tell people, hey, the design and marketing business is a now business. People for mm-hmm. whatever reason always want their stuff now, and so we go, so the, the famous question is I always ask like every project briefing when do you need this by. And, you know, it's always like yesterday, <laughs> you know, like, well, okay, you know, but, um, and, and as I've getting, gotten older, like, as you kind of, kind of grow personally, you know, you really can learn to kind of, um, how to navigate that a little bit by saying, hey, well, we can, we can do this, you know, like today, it was, the question was, when can we get this done for the client? I said, well, um, what I want to say is we can get it done by the end of the week, because that just, to me, is a good stopping point. End of the week, get it all done, and it's not going to take that long, but I thought, you know what, I have all this other stuff, I'm looking at my list, it's going to be Tuesday before we get it done. Um, and, th- and that's kind of like that growth where you say, hey, I'm going to plan for that um, so that I know that tomorrow, being Friday, is going to be some hiccups in the day of people scrambling to get their stuff done for the week. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, There's a, can you go to uh, winbynoon.com? So, I, very similar to you, uh, big on technology and apps mm-hmm. and all the CRMs. I'm a big CRM yeah. guy. Um, oh and goodness. I always have a yellow pad. You know, I write you know, quick notes down, phone numbers or whatever. And then I met this guy who started this company, Win by Noon, and it's a it's a mortgage or real estate product. But what it is, it's a day planner. And his whole philosophy is win by noon. So get all your to do list done by noon. Um, and so I use this every day and it's all five days of the week. Um see if they have a picture of it. But what I like the most about it, you know, you kind of see a picture of yeah. your your day and it's something I've never done is had a physical day planner, right? Yeah. I, I kind of like it. Yeah. Kind of like being able to actually write out instead of all putting it all in Outlook. Yeah. Which I do that too. But then, you know, how many calls you've made? Well, what you don't see here at the bottom is it says you you judge your day. Yeah. Right? So what, what how productive was I? One to ten. Oh, nice. And then yeah. um, the question I love <coughs> is uh, was I proactive or reactive today? Yeah. And that's when I can really look back and go, yeah, I was really reactive today. I let the day control me. I let all the people come into the office, the phone calls, the emails. Uh-huh. Uh, when I keep my outlook, when I schedule time to do my outlook emails, like if I every two hours I'll open it, I find myself being much more proactive. But if I have that email up and I see an email, I'll stop what I'm doing and reply to it. And then it takes me twice as long to get, you know. Yeah. So I uh, yeah, win by noon. Uh, he sells the books quarterly. I think they could be used for indie industry, but they're designed for real yeah, estate. Yeah, I, I, you know, I did that last year, um, and, uh, and and it was really kind of like my first year of beer. What it was really truly just me, and um, I had one. I had a, an actual day planner. It was called like a passion planner. I think you've probably seen those. Right? Have you heard of that? Uh-huh. Yeah. And and they kind of let you. They encourage you to kind of like you know do stuff like that. Like leave, leave a section in there for doodles and whatever you know. But I got a old fashioned number two pencil and a, and a day planner. And I kept my entire books and every, like I'd, I'd sit and follow, follow the books that day. Um, what I found out was, is, is that I'd end up, uh, I'd end up transposing that to Outlook or whatever anyways. <laughs> so, so I was, I was like, well, I'm part of the redundancy. So I, and then I was sharing my schedule more with them, more people. So it, so it became more necessary, but I loved being able to have something tactile to kind of write down. That's why I do the, the pencil and the, and the yeah. pad every day is I, I want to be able to write it down because if I don't, I know I won't get to it. So that's it. So you talk about setting your, you know, being intentional. You know, my wife, when I first met her, she's like, Hey, I want you to set, you know, set your intention for the day. That's where that came from. She's like, what are the, what are the three things you're going to set out to be or do today? Your wife's telling you this? Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. When we were dating, she, you know, she was, and she'd say, I don't want you to send it to me. So I'd write it down. I'd snap a picture of it and send it to her, you know, and, uh, when she's at work and said, hey, I'm going to do that. This is what I'm doing today. This is who I'm going to be today, you know. And I was going through kind of a really try, trying period in my career and, you know, with, with the people I was working with, you know. Is this the transition from working with the startup to? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this, this, is, this is another company between there, yeah. So, and, and I, um, and so I, I would do that every day, but it, but it really made a big difference. And so that's, that's what I look at as my intention of the day. And, 
and how to be intentional. Is like, this is what I'm going to do today. You know, and sometimes it just means like this is be. You know, this is who I'm going to be. Uh, and how to be me. So that's, well, that's awesome. Yeah. It, it's totally awesome to have some accountability partnership yeah. with your spouse. Cause so many people that I know in our industry, at least when you say things like, Oh, you have to have an accountability partner or coaching or yeah. mentor, you, people roll their eyes and, you know, accountability partner is kind of a dorky thing to say, but yeah. for me, it's huge. Yeah. Right. Just having somebody to do that. I mean, it's so awesome. I don't know how I would take it. If my wife, made me send her a picture of my to-do list might have some issues but <laughs> <laughs> but i have right andrew andrew heath's my accountability partner yeah. and every we we talk every friday and we set uh, here's the big things we want to accomplish yeah. you know we talk a little bit about what's going on just yeah. to have somebody there to know kind of like your coaching but accountability partner is yeah. very specific on a small list oh yeah but just having that's huge yeah i, th- I think so and like you it, it you know, there has to be kind of a good fit for that too, you yes. know, like, yeah. uh, you know, um, my coach, it's all, it's, it's usually all business, you know, and it's, just, it's, it's not counseling. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, it's, it's, it's not anything like that. It's like, Hey, we're planning together and you're, and her whole thing is, Hey, you know, the answers you already have. We, I, I believe you already have the answers. I'm going to help you find the answers that are kind of within you. So like she'll, she, she doesn't ever say, I never say, Oh, how do I get my business to grow today? And she says, "Boy, well, we do A, B, and C." It's not like that. She's I'll, I'll, if I ask that question, she's going to be like, "Well, what are you doing? And what do you feel like you need to do? And you know what's working, what's not?" And I kind of go through them. But then, you know, usually by the end of the session, I'm like, "Oh, okay, I, I know what I need to do because I really do know what I'm doing mm-hmm. um, for the most part." <laughs> but sometimes it's just it's just kind of finding that answer. Yeah, uh, almost more like a consultant, yeah, maybe, than a yeah, coach. Sort and, of, yeah, and, it, and I found that because I have a coach too, but it takes it's depending on your success is going to be depending on how much work you put into what they're yeah. saying yeah if you're just going to pay the money to have a coach and then take the call every two weeks but you don't really follow through with the work then it's just kind of a waste of money yeah yeah and, and, I, and that's where i go say you know fit is important i've had i've had a ton of people approach me because this is this is a big thing right now becoming a, a coach or you mm-hmm. know adding coaching to your services or consulting to what you do to kind of make a little side hustle or something like that and i've i've had these calls with people take the complimentary session i had one with a guy and i was like because I feel like you're kind of like in the same spot as I am. You're just trying to help, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, but having somebody who maybe has a little more wisdom in you that can kind of help push you in ways who maybe has been there and done it, you know, I, I think there's all, a lot of validity in that because a lot of times I feel like I don't know what I'm doing or I feel like, gosh, am I just spinning my tires in the mud today and am I getting anywhere with it? And other days I feel like I'm on top of the world. So it just, yeah, you know, yeah. But it all depends on how well I kind of, uh, I guess, plan out, you know, what, what my battle plan is. So, so do you, do you credit whether you feel blah or in the mud or you're on the top of the world? Do you credit that to your to-do list or is it, do you have a morning routine or what? Cause um, I gotta be honest this week I felt so blah. Yeah. And I thought I've been blaming it cause I started yeah. working out this week. I'm like this working out's making me feel really blah. Yeah. I, um, so, so I, 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 um, I'm the older I get, the more kind of rigorous I am in my routine. I, you know, I used to be like, I think back when I was a kid in like my teens, early twenties and I just, I didn't, you know, you just flew by the seat of your pants. But, um, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very routine oriented in how I, how I approach, you know, my week and everything like that. And, and sometimes it just feels like out, outside of that, you know, like it, it, it throws me off. So it's good. If and you bad. break your routine, it throws yeah, you off a little bit. Yeah. So, um, and I know that during, you know, during the hours of, of, you know, I don't know, what do you call it, eight to six or whatever, you know, hours I typically work, you know, whatever, whatever those are, you know, then anything can happen usually, but, you know, I try and can, you know, control the chaos a little bit, but, mm-hmm. um, but really, you know, like certain days or certain t- times or certain things I got to do that I, I like to do it a certain way so that I can. <laughs> well, it's, it's really uh, awesome to hear you talk about your coaching and accountability because that's a question I ask a lot of people on the podcast, yeah. you know, people that have had very seasoned in their careers, have uh-huh. lots of success, you know. And I say, you know, how do you st- stay accountable? And are you, do you s- seek out accountability? You have accountability partners, you have coaching. And it's funny because you think they would all say yes. Yeah. Right. But um, Doug Mendehall, uh, Roger Wendell, some of these uber successful people have said, no, not really. I'm just kind of a self accountable person. Uh huh. And so hearing him say that really made me realize that, no, not everybody needs accountability. But I need accountability, right? Right. I'm not a very self-accountable person. Right. And so, but that doesn't mean 
I can fail. You no. just got to go out and find those accountability. It doesn't have to be something super complex like Ryan and I kind of have an unspoken accountability. Yeah. Because um, we like to get to the work early. Right? Yeah. We like to be the first ones there. And so we have a Mr. Coffee coffee pot. Yeah. And I know if I can get there and turn that coffee pot on before Ryan gets there, he's going to walk in and see the coffee's full and be like, oh, Cody's been here for 10 minutes. Yeah. And so it's almost like we, we kind of race that coffee pot. Yeah. And we never talked about we're doing, okay, let's do a thing where whoever starts the coffee pot wins. No, it just kind of became this accountability. Oh, sure, thing. yeah. Or as soon as I pull in that parking lot, I'm looking for his truck. Yeah. You know, and I don't see it. I'm like, all right, I made it here before him. <laughs> yeah. And so it's that unspoken accountability that for some weird reason it gets us to the office early and it gets us pumped up when we're there. And well, that, and that's that's what I like when I when I mean like it's got to be a good fit. You know, like sometimes you know like you can you know you can go to all these you know seminars and you know listen to the different podcasts and stuff like that. You know, read like as many Tim Ferriss books as you want or whatever. You know, or, uh, stuff like that. You know, like uh, and and it's got to be a good fit. It's got to work for you. Um, otherwise, otherwise you're kind of forcing it, and then you kind of force more on the the action of the routine or the accountability or whatever, rather than why am I doing it? Like why am I, why do I do what I do? Like why do why is it important for me to have a routine where you know I, I do whatever it is I do, or, like keep that checklist or whatever, you know? Um, and if I don't, then it throws me off, you know? Um, well, that's because it works for me and it's motivating to me to say to see that one more check on that list. And if, yeah. if I can end my day and every single one of those things I put on that list is checked off, I, I, that feels that feels damn good, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need to get better. I mean, I yeah. always there's always something on my checklist. Yeah, it's like, right. Always. You're like that. That can wait. You can't. Tomorrow. You can't. Sometimes I feel like I go too light on it, right? I'm yeah. like, because I'm like, I have to get this done. I'm not putting this on this if I'm not gonna get it done. So, and there's I, when I started, I was like, I had a, a full list, a full sheet. And I was like, oh, this is like my weekly checklist. Yeah. This is my, and I had to make it my daily checklist. This is what I do every day. So, yeah. You know, and that's the other thing about that one by noon is there's only so much stuff on, there's only right. so much room on the to-do list. Yeah. And I found kind of like you were talking about when you give a client a due date, you realize Friday's going to be chaos, so you give them more time than you probably need. Yeah. So I've been doing that with my to-do list too, is I've been making it shorter. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I don't A, B, and C and do all that, but but making it shorter so that I can leave the day with everything checked yeah, and realize that not everything has to be done today. Right. Right. And yeah. maybe by doing that, I get six tasks done a hundred percent yeah, rather than 13 tasks done 75%. Yeah. So what do you think about time blocking, Ryan? I think time blocking is good. The question that I wanted to ask though was, uh, um, we always ask our guests or we try to oh, is yeah. what, what what's your what's your definition of success right now? What, uh-huh. what do you think your definition of success would have been coming out of like college? And yeah. then what what do you th- kind of see as your future success yeah, with, with Revere? Oh, is yeah. that kind of on the top of your mind sometimes? Is, yeah. Is, is, am I doing? Am I have I reached my pinnacle? Am I successful yet? Yeah. You know, like I um, so in a similar in a similar vein. You know, like at my coaching session last week, I was talking. I was like. We were talking about, you know, do some revenue projections and, you know, kind of doing our, our 2018 planning. And, um, and, and and I said, you know, I've been doing this business for a long time. I, I kind of know, I know, uh, I know what to estimate for a project. I know, you know, I know how to do, you know, I know what I need to be hitting. I, I know what works for me and everything like that. And I said, I, I don't, sometimes I just don't really know, like, how do, how do my numbers, how, do, how, does, how does everything I'm doing compared to what maybe somebody else in a similar position is doing? Like, am, am I par for the course? It, like, as if there's a par for the course, right? I yeah. mean, like, we're, you know, what is that? And she's like, why, why do you feel like you need to know that? Like, why, why is that important to you? Like, you know, and I said, well, I, I kind of want to measure my success. Like, am I doing better than those people? Am I doing, you know, and she's like, well, you know, you might be making double the, the, the revenue that they're making every year or whatever, you know, it, you know, you might have a better quarter than somebody, but th- does that really make you more successful than them? And I, I and and the answer for me was no. It, it doesn't necessarily because um, I um, I guess I define success as is am I growing the company? Is 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 the company? Is my career? Uh, am, am I in a position to? Am I doing what I love? Am I happy doing it? And am I feeling like I'm I'm reaping the rewards I want to get? So might not be monetarily, right? You know, um, and I, I like to set little incentives for myself. I remember my my first. Uh, this is when I when I first started. You know, I was like I was like my first ten thousand dollar month. 
I'm going to buy myself a digital camera because I wanted a DSLR really bad, you know, and I hit it within like, a, you know, two months or something like wow. that, you know, which is, you know, like, the, like, and I look back now, I was like, oh my gosh, the, you know, the, that, that seems like nothing. I got a camera for that, you know, but like, you know, like, you know, like to incentivize yourself and to measure your success in, in certain ways, you know, and not necessarily monetarily, but it's like, it, but in a way that's a rewarding system, like where I feel like, am I being rewarded? Do I feel fulfilled in what I'm doing? And I feel like there's another, you know, another peak to kind of get to. And um, so my definition of success uh, in college would have been that probably that conventional level, right? Like, do I have a great paying job? Do I have, you know, a, a good house and a nice car and all those material things and stuff like that? And I think as you get older, you realize, well, you know, like that stuff's nice, but that's not necessarily defining success. You know, I didn't want to do that and have a mountain of debt underneath me. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so now it's more of, uh, hey, do I feel like my company is showing positive growth? Um, am I building a culture of people who are excited about what they do? Am I, am, am I helping other people be fulfilled in their careers? And, you know, do I have a great work-life balance? And I do, you know, like I, I, my, um, my last company, it was, I thought, you know, you have to work you know, all day and all night, all the time, seven days a week, you know, to make something happen. And sometimes you just do that for the sake of doing it. And this time I was like, you know, I, I can do that, but I'm not going to work myself to the point where I don't see my family because my family is kind of my number one. I, I, so I set out to do that's part of my life plan. And so, uh, I want to see my, I want to have, I want to have breakfast with my wife and kids every morning and I want to have dinner with them every night if at all possible. And there's usually one or two nights a week where maybe that doesn't happen, but for the most part, you know, I'll be home for dinner tonight, and uh, that's fulfilling to me. And that that and and all the bills are paid on top of it. So I feel like that's success right now. So I'm good with it. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, it's good to hear. And and uh, you know, one thing I've been thinking about a lot is your personality. Is I for a long time I heard that your per this your personality is the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. Yeah. Right. And so I've been thinking about that a lot when it relates to business, and I think you can do the same with your business personality. And so, you know, that's why I love the, doing this podcast we do is because we get to meet cool people mm -hmm. and, and have a conversation, which is hard to do anymore to sit down and have a conversation like this, right? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad I got to meet you a little bit better and, and now uh, you'll have to come back on the podcast. Yeah. And, and I'm excited to hear um, what the next, what 2018 looks like and what the next few years look like. Yeah, for, for sure, so, for sure. Uh, you got anything? No, I think I'm good. It's, it's fun, though. Yeah, it's just fun to sit down and talk with somebody that's in a similar place. Yeah. You know? For sure. And, um, to hear that you did coaching is really cool. Because yeah. Because I don't know a lot of people that do, mm -hmm. and it is a big investment. Yeah, you know, I, I, th I think it's taken on kind of a new, it's kind of got a, it's rebranded itself, too. Yeah, yeah I, I so my my former career before I got into marketing and everything like that, I worked in kind of the public policy sector, and doing a lot of political events and stuff, and working on a campaign. I remember I had one candidate who was running for governor, and he uh, and I said, "Who's that person? What's with him everywhere he goes?" Like, well, that's his life coach. I'm like his life coach. Yeah. What? I helped him write his book, and you know, you're like, what? You know, and so like that was kind of my my first read on like what what is a what is a, a coach? You know, and I think it's. I highly recommend it if you can find somebody who's solid, you know, grounded and can help you. Well, and I, yeah. I lucked out with my yeah. first coach. I didn't yeah. really, I thought, oh, all these coaches must be this good. But yeah. he was the best coach. And I remember on our first call, mm -hmm. um, I it was a two-hour get-to-know-you call, and I walked into Ryan's office. I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work out. And he's like, why not? I'm like, well, I can just tell we're going to become friends, <laughs> right? Because right. he likes to hunt, and yeah. we talked, and he really got to know me. And I'm like, and so I, I said, on my next call, I'm going to tell him I don't want to be friends. Right, uh -huh. I don't want to be my coach. I don't want to be friends I, because I don't want to be able to manipulate you yeah. right, into thinking, you know, that I'm getting stuff done or yeah. I, or take you a direction. I want you to be manipulating me. The yeah. way, you know? And uh, and so I did. I told him, you know, look, I just really want this to be hardcore. Yeah. Um, I'm a motivated person. Uh, I, I have my accountability in place. Yeah. I'm enthusiastic. So you don't need to call and pump me up and have this big rah rah. I want to sit down and get to business and cons consult me, right? Yeah. And help me with my business planning and where to go and making big decisions. And I had some big decisions in my career to make this year and he really kind of helped me work through those and took me some directions I probably wouldn't have gone, right? But just knowing that you have somebody that's really intimate with your business. Yeah. They can give you an unemotional outside opinion, right? Where if 
when my coworkers or something or my spouse would give me an opinion, I would have an emotional reaction to it. Yeah, right. So to have somebody completely outside that really doesn't give, I mean, they care, but it's not going to impact them to give you their opinion has been really valuable valuable to me so 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 the, so the saying i don't want to be friends with you is, is that that went over well and that, that worked yeah, yeah. And we became really close friends so. oh, yeah <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, sometimes it's unavoidable you know but i yeah. mean like as long as you can set that parameter i think i think there's 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 some benefit to saying hey this is what i need i mean if i'm gonna invest my time and my money with you yeah, yeah. well so. and, it, and it was very real it wasn't fake and yeah. then uh i've since moved on to a different coach and kind of going through interviewing different coaches, and, and now I'm realizing how much I lucked out with my first No coach, kidding. So. That's cool. So, yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, do you want to give a shout-out to your coach? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. So if, if you're looking for a coach, uh, you know, uh, Michelle Mather, she's, uh, she's a, she does different levels of coaching from everything from like kind of personal coaching, uh, life coaching, I guess what you call it, and all up through like business coaching. So I, I think she's been fantastic. And I highly recommend her. Very relational person. Very local. Uh, local Portland. So, um, but does she take? Is she national? Does she take calls clients from outside there? You know, I don't really know. I don't really. I um, I know what she does for me, and I, I don't really know <laughs> yeah. too much. What you know, like what her her credit. I, like I said, she was a client of mine um, a few years ago, and so like uh, that. That's kind of how I got connected with her. Wasn't I was looking for anything? But yeah, yeah. Because my, my coach is in California, so I really don't think a coach has to be close. No, I, I don't think so either. You know, like and we've. We have actually had a few sessions where you're kind of doing virtually, and it's you're like, oh, it's just as impactful to do it over Skype or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. do it that way. So, yeah. Um, and how do people get in touch with you? People can get in touch with me through um, it really our primary marketing tool right now, or our you know our community tool is, is Instagram. So Revere Creative on, on Instagram, our website. Thirty five hundred followers. I saw that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, for only and, being in business a year. Yeah, well, really you know, like we, we I, again, th- there was it was a focused effort to be to push out genuine content, ask a lot of questions, engage people, you know. And we said, hey, we really focused our audience. Like, we're not looking for necessarily clients on there. We're looking for just kind of community. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that people responded well to that. Um, so Revere Creative is Instagram. If you want to go to our website right now? We do have a contact form. You can get in touch with us there. It's Revere dot one O N E. Squarespace.com slash revere dot one. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Say it again. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to yeah. screw you up. Yeah, you can catch up with me there, or you can email me. I mean, it's just matt at revere dot one. I mean, if you want to just get in touch that way. So I'm, I'm always down to connect with anybody if you're near or far. I mean, I, I love getting to know people and hearing your story, too. So reach out, you know. Awesome. Know. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we're going to be on a short hiatus while Ryan and I go to a convention and uh, hopefully uh, more more business planning, life coaching. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So this has actually been a great podcast going into that. Yeah. You know, because sometimes Ryan and I I don't mean to keep going back into the conversation here, but uh, I don't know if you feel this way, Ryan, but sometimes I feel like uh, we're on an island sometimes. Yeah. Because not not everybody in our industry picks up on on this, you know, Mm -hmm. And, and same with with networking with other business people. So to meet somebody else that kind of has that same yeah. business mentality or, or has the same needs with business planning and coaching and accountability and, yeah. and starting a new business. Do you kind of feel that way too, Ryan? Yeah. Yeah. So good. it's kind of good to know that you're not alone sometimes. Yeah, it is. You're not the only right? uh, rookie that needs a coach. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. See you next time. Yep. yep. Catch us the Hunt for Success Podcast dot com. Oh yeah, Hunt for Success. Did you turn it off yet? No. If you're still listening, Hunt for Success Podcast dot com. Join our mailing list too. We just have a new mailing list. You can join Instagram. You guys know how to find us. See you next time. Later. <laughs>